Yo. Uh, I'm live, I believe. Oof, my little pipe. Good morning. Uh, we're rocking and rolling here. John Fitch knows nothing. Um, welcome, everybody. Make sure you have anything set up here. All righty. Um, yeah, we're going to talk. Today it's episode 28. We had JP yesterday. We're going to calm things down a little bit today, slow things down. <laughs> he had us uh, revved up. JP's a talk fast talker. Interesting stories, interesting uh, insight. I didn't know that. He didn't, I haven't heard that story from him about uh, his 9 11 adventures. Um, yeah. So yeah, dude. <clears throat> Let's uh play a little music. We'll talk about following your passion, bro. Let's do it. I feel unhappy. I feel so sad. I've lost the best friend that I've ever had. was a woman I loved so, but it's too late now, I let her go. She turned out to be a hoe. I'm going through changes. I'm going through changes. What's up, people? All right, so follow your passion. Follow your passion. I've heard a lot of people uh, talk about this. I've seen the, the banners, the signs, the motivational quote, tweet, whatever the shit. Follow your passion. And I've also seen just as many uh, people who are successful or in guru status position say, you know, fuck passion. That's not for everybody. <laughs> But I think they're both right. They're both right. It's important. Both are both are right. But because I think there's nuanced. I think it's nuanced. I think it matters. Uh, the details matter about chasing your passion. 
right? Like it has to be realistic first off. The passion that you, you know, I'm passionate. Well, oh, well, what you're trying to accomplish through your passion, I guess, needs to be um, a little bit flexible. You know, you you could be, I, you know, when you're a little kid, anything's possible because you just have all this potential and unused potential. You don't know what you can develop into. You don't know what you can put yourself into. So you might be like, oh, I'm gonna be a rock star. I love music. I'm passionate about music. I'm be a rapper, whatever. It's fine if you're putting yourself into it 100. percent Then you're then you're you're doing everything, you're noticing everything about it. But at some point you've got to, you've got to realize that there's certain parts of it you're better at than others, or maybe you're just, um, you know, you're not cut out to be the actual rapper. Maybe, maybe you're supposed to be the manager. Maybe you're the guy who, uh, who hooks the cables up. So all the, all the instruments sound good. That's it. That's the thing. Like your your base passion can still be music. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're like, oh fuck, I can't I can't play lead for a ma- a big band. I can't I can't be uh, like Jay Z. I I should just go and fucking work at the uh, the RV sales place, which I don't know. You can make a lot of money there, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I had to go. I had to go and work sales for some some tech job. I have to. I have to code. I have to do whatever. You don't have to do shit. <laughs> do what you want to do. I think that's that's what it's really about. Like what uh, what 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 can give you purpose? I think does the passion does your passion give you purpose? Do you feel like uh, <clears throat> you know just listening to music and buying music all the time is that is that fulfilling a purpose? Is that really your passion, your purpose, or is that just something you enjoy? I guess there's a lot of things I enjoy, but I mean, my passion, what is the thing I have to do? Like, I think I'm passionate about uh, being the baddest I can be at any moment so that I uh, can, I don't know. So I'm always working out, always trying to better myself, always trying to, passionate about absorbing information and sharing information. The idea is, I think you have to be more uh, outcome independent, right? I think it's important to go for your passion, but I think you need to be outcome independent and be able to pivot. Maybe you're not going to be, you know, I I spent my entire childhood preparing to play professional football. That's all I was 100% I'm doing professional football, but I also liked um, wrestling. So, you know, I'd heard of professional football players who were also wrestlers, so that that made sense. And I just, I like wrestling. And uh, so I stuck with that because of, you know, competitive nature. But it was my my passion for football or what I thought was my passion for football. I think more it was my passion for training and getting better and climbing to the highest um, place I could. Best version of me, I guess, through athletics, through physical expression. That was my, that was just my medium. I'm an artist. I believe I'm an artist. So my medium was always um, physical, physical art through competition. But I think, you know, you should also be, uh, well, I mean, with the rational, you know, realistic goals, realistic passion, realistic outcomes and not being married to your outcomes. You go, if you go full at something, if you're, you know, I was, I was doing my best version to be the best athlete I could be, to be the best football player I could be. So that led me to being a better wrestler. It kept me out of a lot of trouble. It set me up to have more success in other things. And I had other, I had options then because of the amount of work and energy I had put in to being the best athlete I could be, being the best football player I could be. So when I, I got to that age where I had to make a decision where, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not really fast enough to play the positions I would have to for my size. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, I can't really put on the weight. I wasn't willing to, uh, to go on the gas to get, to get big, right? Because that, that's an option some guys take. But instead, I just decided to wrestle. I could continue competing through wrestling. And, uh, you know, I figured that my 
you know, passion was just going to carry me into coaching wrestling, which that's nothing wrong with that. It's still my, me following my passion could have led to me being a coach, a wrestling coach. That probably would have been okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, but I, uh, but my passion also opened up doors for me to pivot and and try new things, take risks. You know, uh, the hard work that I put in in uh, in in training in high school and saving money in high school, and then going to college and not not wasting money in college either. You know, even though I never used my degree, but. <sighs> You know, I, I saved whatever I could uh, through college. I didn't um, didn't expense it. I didn't get a credit card. I didn't put things on credit. Uh, so I didn't put myself in any extra debt. And then I, I worked hard to get scholarships, so I, did, I didn't have to pay as much for tuition. So I ended up graduating without student loans. So the hard work I put into wrestling and athletics and being the best version of myself in that realm open up doors, opportunities came by. I could have just done the safe route and uh, been a coach and that would have been fine. And a lot of people would take that route and there's nothing wrong with that. But that, uh, to, to say that that's not following your passion, I think that is following your passion. Yeah, your, your passion was to be a teacher. Okay, that's great. So I, uh, um, I don't fully agree with the, uh, you know, don't follow your, 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 your passion crowd but i understand that a lot of people are like oh well, i'm gonna be this famous rapper and then uh they never write a rap song they never <laughs> like all they do is consume music and talk about what they're gonna do and they never put any work in well yeah that's that's um that's not gonna get anywhere that's not exactly uh passion that's that's delusions delusions of grandeur not doing any actual work And it doesn't it doesn't really qualify as the same. And then and then you have the stuff with like the secret where people think that you can just be passionate about something and, and think about it and it manifests. Well, I mean you have to you have to get out there and do the work. I mean, I can manifest things as I'm as you know, by doing the work towards them. If you don't do the work towards them, nothing's gonna manifest itself. It doesn't just appear. It's like the old Mice from rice theory. You just left rice sitting around, right? Mice would magically appear out of nowhere. They actually used to believe that. Uh, they had to do, <clears throat> they had to apply a scientific method to find out and change the variables. Excuse me, to find out the mice were just climbing into the rice sacks. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think I lean mostly towards uh, chasing your dreams. Uh, follow, not chasing your dreams. Follow your passion, like the things that move you. Right? If coaching and teaching move you, that's that's pretty fucking good. If being around kids, it's pretty fucking good. I don't really understand the, uh, you know, slaving away at a nine to five for a job you hate for bosses and people you don't really know and don't care much about for a product. You have no real attachment to, I don't know about that. That sounds crazy to me because that, unless that is your passion, I just want to, I just want to turn the wheels until I die and then have a little bit of a pension and have other people raise my kids. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think you should be a rebel and, Make your kids your passion and stay at home. Uh, what do you guys think about following your passion? Are you guys believers in it? Do you think people should just shut up and get a job? Are you a boomer? Okay, boomer. What kind of what kind of uh, outlook are you guys having? Uh, Ridge Way Walker. How's Nate? Which Nate? I know a couple. Nate Moore. I think he's good. Phil Baroni says. Uh, are you smoking weed? <laughs> Lame, suck it up and smoke some crack already. <laughs> no, thanks, Phil. I'm all right. Phil says uh, changes. Yes, that was a little Aussie changes. Leah says, uh, nice song. Thank you. Is it Leah or is it Lay? Lay Stewie. 
Marshall, what's up, dude? Uh, Phil, thanks for the bravo. Vincent, what's up? How you doing, buddy? Lay said, uh, okay, I'm quitting my job. Fitch says so. No, don't fit your, quit your job. You got to you gotta pay the bills. Number one rule is survive. Number one rule is survive. If you can't, if you can't quit your job and still survive, then it's a problem. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right? You need to uh, survive, rule number one. And on your free time, start working on your side hustle and work on making your side hustle your full-time hustle. Like if you can have a, a normal job, pays the bills, and then you have things that you like to do for fun, that you can find a way to make money at them, that's ideal. But there's always a way to make more money, a little extra effort, a little extra time, might as well. I mean, you're with the way technology works, your whole industry, whatever it is, can change like in a couple of years. But 15 years into industry and then whoops, one uh, one AI algorithm now does your job and 50 other jobs. And then now you, you know, you're specialized and you've got to learn to code or something. And Boxer One says, what if my passions are Yoel Romero, Herschel Walker, and John Fitch streams? Then... Um, then subscribe to the uh, Patreon, Patreon patreon.com backslash Sean Fitch. And, uh, you know, support the stream with a, with a contribution. Uh, yeah, you could get some super chat money. That would help keep the streams going strong. And you would get all of your necessities for your passion on the John Fitch stream uh, angle, at least. Well, oh, excuse me. Um, Floodland says the arts are tricky because it's subjective. So is the UFC. In the arts, they only laud a few. I have seen many talented artists selling drawings on the street or in a mall. Yeah, I think, man, I think this is why we could be on the cusp of a renaissance again, right, guys? A modern renaissance. Renaissance of masculinity because of the internet, because we have this uh, social media platforms, we have this connectivity with people. We don't need the normal sources uh, to supply our art, you know, government approved art, right? Um, the fashionista approved fashion where they wear these ridiculous things and no one would ever wear in a million years. It's like they're, it's like I they're just like playing get, playing jokes on everybody. It's like they're so let's see how stupid we can dress these people up on these runways and, and make regular people think we actually like it. But so you have you have uh, Instagram and other other things where people can reach out. Like that that the the painting that I did, I commissioned to a girl. I just I I liked what I saw her putting up. Uh London Artistic, I believe is the uh handle. But there's so much opportunity for artists now to connect with an audience and and uh, make money that never was possible before. If you're good, if you can if you can make something beautiful, like people will buy your shit. That'll happen. That happens. I think the uh, the internet being a it's still a baby. You know, people still haven't figured out all social media marketing, but it's going to be a thing. I believe, I believe it's going to be utilized to make things beautiful again, make art beautiful again, make art beautiful again, Maba, Maba, make art beautiful again. People can do it because we don't have the postmodernist telling us, oh, this is art now. We, we can see it. We can see it in our stream. Oh, wow. This is really cool. Oh, so we made this print. Oh, I can buy this print from this person. There's a link to their website. I click. Mm, $12. I like it. I'll purchase. I think it's, uh, we're on the precipice of something that's quite beautiful. We just have to avoid the draconian like control that China has on their internet. We can't have that here because then we're fucked. 
we're all we're all doomed. The damn Viking says, "What position in football? Uh, middle linebacker." Ooh, so I was jerked. Middle linebacker, and uh, I'd play, you know, running back, uh, fullback sometimes. Mostly these, mostly the blocks. I'd run people over, open up holes. And it was fun. Football was fun, man. So serious. Such a this is high school football. It meant something. It meant something, guys. It did though. It's not bad that you, you feel passionate like that about stuff, guys. It's okay. But you gotta laugh at yourself a little bit. Have fun. Have fun. Lee says, uh, society is designed to keep us enslaved to a nine to five in debt. So we don't have time or energy to pursue our dream. You are correct. Get them in debt. That's the way to do it. Force them into thinking that college is necessary when everything that they've ever needed to know is on a magic screen, magic screen that fits in a box in their pocket, fits in their pocket. Um, yep. You need that degree to survive, but really it just puts you into debt. You get a degree in something you can't get a job for. Uh, Vincent is, uh, agreeing with you says indeed. Alex says, have you ever done dove into rental properties? I, I have not. Well, I mean, I had, uh, I had two properties at one time and I had a friend rent the property. I never take full advantage to profit off of them. Uh, I don't know. And then I had the house, but I didn't want to have, I don't want to share the house and rent it and whatever. Um, with the ex, so we just sold. And now I have a room. This house here, I, ho I hopefully someday will be able to upgrade out of it and turn this into a rental property. But yeah, that was the that was the plan. My original plan. Don't listen to women, guys. My original plan was I bought a I bought a, a, a condo. It was two bedroom condo. It was nice, eleven hundred square feet. It's perfect for starting family. I had it before I got married. We got we got married, and as, as soon as she married, she's like, "Oh, well, this doesn't feel like my place. I need my place." So we wasted money buying a second place, <laughs> and uh. Yeah. And then yeah, I was buried under the uh the, the 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 condo, so it was not smart to sell because I would have lost money. So I stuck it out until it climbed back and and became, you know, 15,000 above what I bought it at. Then I sold it. But yeah, originally the plan was to live in there until I had enough to um turn it into a full-time rental property and I could go to somewhere else and uh or sell it either way if i would just have stayed there would have saved so much money so many headaches one horrific decision can lead to a lot of other garbage <laughs> but i should have just said shut up this is what we need to do now financially this live with it deal with it this is what's up you want to be married, we're married. This is it. <laughs> we're not fucking buying a bunch of house bullshit and whatever. And Boxer One says nine to five is your living. Five to eight is your passion. Mm, no, 69 is your passion. Ooh. Uh, Paracram, what's up, buddy? Been gone for a while. He says, uh, you have to read Bus Ticket Collector Essay by Paul Graham. Bus ticket collector. What's that all about? Uh, where do I find a link to this? Amazing uh, bus ticker. Bus ticket collector. Oh, MMA unhinged says, okay, boomer. Oh, you, you got the boomer here. I am coming with the boom. Vincent says, part of the problem is men and women have been transfixed on the idea of happiness as the actual pursuit. It's what drives consumerism, passion, and fulfillment were never an issue a few generations ago because the family was intact. 
Yeah, the destroyed family is a big problem. Well, that's that's. I mean, there's a lot of problems that we have right now are because the families are broken up. One of the big problems with, uh, excuse me, um, homelessness is because families are broken up. Like people aren't there together. I was reading some tweets today where there people, someone was talking about the traditional families. It used to just be, it wasn't just one nuclear family, man, woman and children. It was the grandparents, like two or three generations. The great grandparents might live in, in the same house. I, I have this theory that women are supposed to get pregnant from 18 to like 24 years old, but the grandmothers in the house are the ones that, that raise the kids. Cause that's when they start settling down and, uh, becoming more nurturing. I'm wondering if we're, we're destroying a piece of the fabric of how we've, how we've developed over the, the generations. Because it would make sense that the older females in the group would take care of the offspring after they get to a certain age. I don't know. Is that even witnessed in uh, ape behavior? I could be making it all up. That's, yeah, that's why I'm not a scientist. See, I know nothing. Uh, yeah. But the family's eroding is a major problem. And box one says, watch such great heights again. What happened to the black guy, Matt? And did Luke steal his gloves? <laughs> no, I, Matt used to steal a lot of people's gloves. Matt, it, it could have been that Matt stole somebody's gloves and then Luke stole him those gloves because they knew it wasn't the Matt's. So that's a very possible uh, outcome of the story you're talking about, maybe. Uh, Matt went homeless for a little while, and then I've seen him pop up here and there, different places, working at other gyms. Matt's uh, Matt's an interesting person. Grew up in New Jersey. Um, had some abuse issues with uh, his family, and then uh, yeah, he he said he had stories about getting beat up by the New Jersey police. <laughs> Trying to try to scare him away, and then he went down to south to uh, Florida. And um, yeah, I don't know how he even found his way to AKA. He's calling on the phone or something, and found his way. Interesting, interesting individual. Him and Phil used to get at it. He uh, Phil left a pair of shorts at the gym once, and uh, he was sparring with Phil. And then, or Phil, Phil was sparring with Matt. And then in, in like a minute into the round or two minutes into the round, he's like, those are my fucking shorts. Those are my fucking shorts. And he starts fucking coming crazy after him. Yeah, it was great. Pretty, pretty much a, a real fight. <laughs> Marshall, Keith, Keith, me, Marshall, uh, Kate, Della, Kate, La. Marshall, okay. Marshall, slaving for a company that pays you less than what you're worth is BS. Been there, forklift and Toyo. Mm. Forklift can be tough. At Boxer One, what does Luke have to be upset about? I don't know. What's he upset about? Uh, Paracram says, uh, he says, that in order to do great work, one has to do whatever makes him obsessive about something. Great mathematicians do math not because of money or fame, but because they like doing math. Uh, makes sense. Yeah, you, you do. You have, to, you have to be obsessive. I've never met anybody who was great at anything who wasn't obsessed with something. How could you not be obsessed? It's okay to be obsessive. As long as it's not getting in the way of your success. Right. Um, I think, again, it matters your scope of where you're putting your obsession. Some guys get obsessed with freaking porn. Right. That's an obsession. Send with obsessed with the next big high watching porno, smoking your jewel. You zoomers get off my lawn. 
Marshall says uh, for fourteen point fourteen fifty an hour, while other OE trick ponies do o who only did forklift made more than me. Mm. Jason Burmes says Lee does great work. John, she is the one behind the Epstein. Didn't you know what in the snow by Niagara Falls? What? I don't know anything about those things. I just read a bunch of words. I'm not sure I understand. Lee does great work, John. She is the one behind the Epstein didn't you know what in the snow by Niagara Falls? Oh, that's is that a thing? Is that what it's called? I'm, I'm blown away. I will look at it. Is it a YouTube thing? <sighs> Lee says, uh hi, yeah, yay, Jason. Good to see you, stranger. Oh, I'm gonna have to go to the Stewie's YouTube and look at stuff. And box one says Lee and Jason sitting in a tree. Ooh, got him. Pear Cramp says, similarly, if you obsess over an activity you can be good at and earn money from, you should start doing it as soon as you can. Geniuses aren't just smart, but have obsessions that exist. I would I would say, like, yeah, Mozart, Beethoven, those people probably had some level of obsession watch watch a documentary on uh dan gable something he's not obsessed with wrestling um yeah man maybe that's a better maybe that's a better thing don't find your passion find your obsession <laughs> find your obsession would that make a good shirt would you guys buy that shirt Paracram uh also said and are fulfilled simply because it's their calling. I mean, could that be broken down? Could I break that down into survival also, though? Right? Like, you become, you, like, your machine is so programmed at finding the most uh, successful way to survive. Right? Is maybe that's a glitch. Maybe you, you've glitched somewhere and that's like becomes the thing that makes you want to survive. So you just keep repeating the task until you get things better and better and better because there's some kind of built in um, survival mechanism to it. You know, like Tiger Woods <clears throat> playing golf as, as a little kid, his dad took him all the time. You know, him him getting to spend time with his dad, him having his needs fulfilled. Maybe those were checks on the list of like, oh, I need these to survive. And he, and he got those. So he just continued to to do it more and more and more. <clears throat> Got better and better and better. Marshall says, I think fishing in maybe 100 yards might be illegal. We're pulling so much fish up in our nets. Huh. Marshall also says he's wasting a shit ton of fish too. Huh. All the troubles of the fisherman I'm unaware of. It's a world, oh, should have bumped the mic. It's a world I don't know nothing about. Paracram uh, says, plus people just consume shit just to avoid emotions. Masculinity should probably mean facing things for what they are and not hiding behind soy-like redditors. Redditards. The redditards. Don't let the redditards get you, man. Nothing good came from them. <laughs> Just hour long documentaries about why they don't like people and they're not funny. <laughs> Marshall says this time of year we do bottom fish turbot turbot. But they but the cat but the bycatch that gets wasted 
Shit ton of halibut. Oh, really? You uh, you throw out the halibut? You can't have it. MMA Unhinged said that women are trash. Ooh, you take that back. Some can be. I like the women that I have in my life. I got some nice ones. Edwin Dominguez says, how would an MMA union or the Ali Act be realistically implemented into MMA? Well, they, uh, it wouldn't be a union. There had to be an association. And an association would operate something similar to uh, Screen Actors Guild. You could uh, relate the promoters to um, production studios, right? So the fighters would have more leverage in being able to jump from uh, uh, promoter to promoter. It would set a, a standard, just a baseline standard of treatment for the athletes across the board. So uh, that would help. And then... Um, The uh, Ali Act, that's just federal legislation. Once that's passed, then they have to comply. And if they do not comply, the athletes can sue. So one of the major things will be, you know, uh, ind independent uh, rankings, right? So the DOC will, wouldn't be putting rankings on people anymore. It would go to a pool of journalists or a group of people to do the rankings. You'd have uh, sanctioning bodies would also then take control of the titles because they can't control title and exclusive contracts or they can give up the exclusive contracts, which they're not going to do that. Um, they would have to share event revenue with the athletes. So uh, if, if uh, you know, one of the athletes wanted to see the printout of where all the money was going and what they made, they'd have to give it to them within a certain time frame, or they would get sued by that athlete. Uh and then on top of that, you would have the champion. When you win the championship, you would then be a free agent. It's automatic free agency. You win the you won the belt. You're the champ. You're at your most valuable, right? You're at your most valuable. You're a free agent. You get to decide if you if you want to stay with that promoter or not, or you can go promote yourself. It would also open up um, sanctioning bodies. Would open up. Um, cross promotions because you would get uh you'd have 12 months for the title holder to fight the number one contender so it wouldn't matter who the who that they were signed under <clears throat> whoever that number one was would get the title shot within 12 months or the title holder would lose his belt yeah mma unhinged says what's in the shake you can go to my nutrition playlist and uh, look at my protein shake, my my morning protein shake. It's in there. You can watch the whole thing, bro. <clears throat> Paracram says, I found a month ago that my hand is wider than LeBron's. He's 6'8", and I'm shy of six foot. My thumb to pinky is nearly 11 inches. Ooh, you could probably pick up some girls with that line. <laughs> so what's your problem for not dunking dude <clears throat> marshall says marshall keat law ah marshall keat law all right i could say it now marshall keat law a boxer one says the pair cram you could definitely beat lebron at basketball i think so the math is there tj says john we blame Jobs for killing dreams, but aren't relationships with toxic people also a dream killer? You got that one right, TJ. It'd be a girlfriend, family member, teacher, friends, etc. Jobs at least help pay bills. That is the truth. The jobs. <coughs> that's funny. Jobs at least help pay the bills. Ooh. I felt that one. <laughs> at troll mm says when's your next fight Jen? i don't know i hope to hear something about getting to fight uh lima douglas lima soon that would be nice but uh other than that i don't know if i'm going to be fighting anymore we'll see 
MMA Unhinged says, uh, thoughts on potential matchup between Khabib versus Tony? Yeah, it needs to happen. That's the one that needs to happen. There ain't really much else for him. If they can't give him GSP, uh, fight Tony. Fight Tony and then move up. Move up and then smash a few guys at 170 and then run off. Right off into the sunset in Dagestan Mountains on the back of an eagle. Lee says, I'm going to tweet you the photo of what I did, John. LOL. Awesome. Vincent says, uh, you want to get down to brass taxes. The school system is a microcosm of what is wrong with society. Get your kids out of them if you can. You can't believe the difference it makes. Yeah, dude. I uh, spent a lot of time <clears throat> with my kids. We do a lot of deprogramming at the Fitch household. <laughs> I, too, can deprogram your children. Paracram says, what's your Twitter, Lee? Lee says, her, my Twitter is at Lee Stewie. That's uh, L-E-I-G-H-S-T-E-W-Y. Ooey Stewie. Ooey Stewie. Uh, Paracram says Lee probably frequents 4chan. Ooh. Mm, sounds like a winner. TJ says, uh, Hey, John, if I want to get into bow hunting, do you recommend I get a legit $300 bow or go with a super basic one? Would you either one work? I mean, are you, do you regularly go and shoot? Is it something you do often? If it's something you haven't started doing yet, maybe go with the cheaper. Like I have a free recurve and I'm debating whether or not to spend $300 on, on, on a, on a, something that I might use once a month. I, you know, uh, uh, maybe, maybe in the future, you know, if I'm, if I start, you know, when I start getting some income and stuff in, I've, I've put enough expenses out there, I think, for myself for a minute. And then I've got to focus my attention and stuff on on uh, pumping up the, uh, the profits. Get some more products put together. Uh, but, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. But So I'm going with the recurve. I have a recurve that somebody gave me for free. It's got two different attachments on it so I can go with the 80-pound which is crazy to pull back or like a, a, a lighter 50, 30. I can't remember. It's lighter, much lighter. I can put the lighter arms on it, <laughs> but uh, that's fun. It's fun enough because I take the kids and then eventually um, they'll probably be good enough. And then there is, they seem interested enough in it that we might all get, you know, new stuff, new stuff together, but that's time off. That's a, that's a little ways off. Maybe our birthdays or something. Paracram says, uh, tasks should be done to the best of your ability. Their reward is the experience of doing them perfectly, not money or fame. Life is a process and you're better off living every moment to the max. You're, uh, correct. Paracram says, uh, source is religious text you got some just sourcing some random religious text just uh get up in the morning and you and you uh you, you ask google for some uh religious scripture just give me some religious you know quotes so i can put those up <laughs> per cram says uh john people are starting to notice Ooh, that's so great I need to do more uh, guests. I need to get some more guests. Guests are fun. I uh, been having fun with the local ones. Make sure you get some more remote people to talk about what's up. Ugh. Paragram. Oh, I had a uh, I had a psychic guy. It's like his assistant. So after I did the. Uh, the uh, the magic the, the the mysticism and uh you know that one um mystique 
in the female mystique and mysticism. That one, this guy, his assistant, this uh, psychic's assistant, ugh, um, reached out, and I don't know. I might try to get him on on the on the show, and uh, but they, but they they probably already knew that they already knew that I would ask probably right. So like, oh, you're like I'm expecting the email back. Like I was expecting your uh, your response, right? Or is that not how, is that not how psychic psychic, psychic ability works? Is it is it like it only works sometimes? Like wouldn't everybody who's actually psychic or clairvoyant wouldn't they just be like super ball and rich? Like, wouldn't you just, oh, well, I mean, because like, oh, yeah, this idea would be good. Oh, well, this is a good sales team. Oh, this is a good, like, you would always pick the best. Wouldn't you always pick the best thing? Wouldn't you always pick the best one that's going to give you the highest return? Or you're going to know not to put your energy into something that's going to fail. It's like, oh, this is kind of, this. I get dark energy from, from the newspaper route. I'll stay away from that. Is that, is that not a thing or is it like, cause I understand why it exists. I understand why people want to believe it, right? Cause there's a lot of stuff that's just unknown. We have a history of wanting to understand our surroundings because it's survival. We want to survive. And uh, anxiety isn't something that helps with survival, right? It, it messes, it gives you more cortisol. So your testosterone drops. It's just, it's just anti-survival being anxious all the time. So if you're like, you know, naked monkey man walking around the jungle, like, why am I here? Why is it so big? What are those things in the sky? Ah, like that could be a lot of stress. And then you see, you know, something that tries to eat you. Okay, so you believe in uh, like magic? Start you like make up magic? If I if I do this and throw rice beans around, um, I stay alive. I, I mean that could be that's a thing, right? I can calm people down. People do weird things to feel calm, like, like a dog or a cat in a cage, like they pace. Like there's there's little ritualistic things animals do to feel better and not feel anxiety. So I get why it exists, but like, I don't know, man. No, it's kind of like pro wrestling. Like, I don't mind. I don't mind that uh, there's pro wrestling out there. I don't mind. It's okay. People like it. It makes people feel good. It entertains them. Okay, cool. I'm not on a, I'm not on a mission to stomp out pro wrestling. I just, I just, I just, uh, I would be, um, I would comment, I would comment if people were trying to sell it as like a real thing. No, this is totally, it's totally real, man. Buy it. No, don't lie to people. <laughs> Stop lying to people. But I don't know. We'll see. And I know nothing. So it could be good just to be put in my place by a real psychic. Sounds fun. Uh, yeah, guys, what do you think about the psychic? Should you talk to him? Paracram says, uh, John, you should watch Nick Fuentes. He is a 21 year old and he blew out all of T P U S A and Charlie Kirk guys. Yeah. They're, they're trying to deplatform him, call him anti-Semite and, uh, Holocaust denier and, uh, him and Michelle Malkin, just it's it's wild. It's like they're yeah the whole deep black word. That's like a far left crazy person thing. So like anybody, I'm immediately skeptical of anybody who's like, you are a Nazi and uh, we must take your platform away. You get away. No, stop talking. That seems very. I don't know. It's a red flag. Red flag for me. I think it's a red flag for me. It's like, okay, these people are up to something. Paracram says, uh, the people are starting to notice. Thing is a Joker reference. Oh, I gotcha. Paracram, he says, 
that he never thought he was not alive, but he felt alive and felt that people were starting to notice. Mm. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff about that Joker movie that Jason Burmis might be able to fill us in on. Like, he might, I have to watch it again. I have to watch it a second time. But he might not even be, like, I don't know. Like, a lot of the stuff may be made up the whole time. Like, a lot of, a lot of it might not have ever happened. TJ says, how do you determine your worth? For instance, rightly so, you charge $500 for a private lesson. How do we determine how much our time is worth to others? Um, only you can make that decision. I mean, you've got to you've got to test your market out a little bit, right? So who are you who are you trying to uh, who are you trying to sell yourself out to, right? I'm setting a high price for my hour because there are people in the area who can afford it, and it's it's no big deal to them. Uh, <clears throat> for a private one-on-one, -on -one, they'll pay that. But that's because I'm exclusive and I'm a higher, higher level of instructor than most people are able to have access to. But if uh, you know, you have to, you kind of have to figure out. Like, have you raised yourself to a level where you, you are uh, an expert? That can be an exclusive voice that people seek out. Like my dad was a, a county commissioner for a while, so he was like deciding what the roads to get, whatever, because he was a civil engineer for a long time, and he was really good at his job. And they didn't want him to leave, and then he stayed for a while, and then they gave him a part time thing. And then there was another county over after he retired that they were pay was paying him to like consult, just talk on the phone with him, <laughs> right? So like he could charge almost almost a year salary of like talking on the phone like once or twice a week to people because he was so good at, at what he did. He could draw that he he could draw that price. Okay, but set your price. Uh if you can't, I mean, you gotta sometimes it, it pays to is to uh do the research to find out what the what the market, you know, what's your neighborhood in market we're going to be able to afford i probably couldn't charge the same amount if i went back in indiana and I, I was i was there uh i could be wrong though there could be certain parts of town where they where they do have that money okay uh you know places around uh indianapolis there might there might be people who have that type of money and, and would be willing to pay for their kids to to do that but you have to you have to kind of find your market who you're trying to sell to and uh, you know, do you want to market yourself or market your skills, your talents to high end? You know, a Louis Vuitton type of thing, a Gucci, right? Can you brand yourself in that manner, in that way? Paracram says, uh, "TJ, the market decides that." Yep. Well, you can, the market does decide that, but you can also uh, influence the market. Like you, if you have, you know, if you could, you could want to make t-shirts, but like, you know, you want to make high-end t-shirts. So you want to charge $60 for a t-shirt. I mean, you're going to have to have the qualities that those other high-end t-shirts uh, have, you know, the, the thread count, the type of thread, how soft it is, the depth of the V-neck, right? Those things are going to matter. So, but you can influence that market. You can convince people to think that, you know, like people who are spending lots of money on Gucci and Louis Vuitton or whatever stuff, the rap people, like, they're probably buying the cheapest version of it just because it's got the label. And there's probably a huge markup on that. <clears throat> yeah. Stewart says Khabib and Tony are fighting. Good. Paracram says Fitch would love poll on 4chan. I uh I've I've followed 4chan a few times on on, on Twitter. They always get taken down, but I, I don't have time to sit in front of the computer and like just 
read stuff. I don't know how people do that. <sighs> I wish I had time to do that type of shit, but I feel like I'm just always, I'm always doing something. I think it's, I spend a lot of time with the kids, a lot of time with the kids. Like four days a week, I pick them up after school. I'm daddy daycare till at least, you know, six to seven o'clock, four days a week. It's yeah, pretty much two, two to two to six thirty most days. That takes a lot of time. Paracram says James Hoffman has a good channel about coffee. Ooh. I like coffee. Coffee time. I'm gonna go get some more coffee here soon. After I finish with you guys, you animals. TJ says, I saw that video of that woman yelling and screaming at the guy at the game, telling him to wipe her jacket and stand up to apologize. What the fuck is wrong with women today? Wham. And they've been, yeah, dude, they're so over-masculated, <clears throat> masculinized, whatever. It's wild. I don't know. Oh, you're going to hear the garbage can truck removal come. Beep, beep. Mm. But yeah, that's just, that's wild. Oh, that's loud. But no, that's, uh, yeah, it's a perfect example. I've seen stuff like that all the time. I've seen women fried out just start hitting guys just because the guys are bigger and it's accepted. <sighs> Unbelievable. He's lucky that... Uh, Somebody else should have just throw their drink on her, spilt their drink on accident. Accident. Whoops. Sorry. It's total accident. But it is. It's, you know, I don't know, man. Guys, stop being such pussies. Just stop it. Like, you know, she's probably with some guy, and the guy was probably like uh, holding her purse. Sorry, bro. <laughs> and then she probably yelled at him all the way home. Marshall says, all I got is time right now. Told my boat I needed some me time. I should pick up a guitar. Yeah, yeah, guitar. Ukulele's good. Phil Baroni says, you got any fights coming up? Uh, I'm still trying to get one with, I'm trying to get the fight with Lima. I'm hoping to get the fight with Lima early next year sometime. Uh, Crazy Bob's supposed to be talking to them about it, but I don't know. Right now, I'm just fighting depression in this belly. <laughs> Joseph says, what would be the last meal of John Fitch? Random question. Last meal. Pussy. <laughs> I don't know. Steak and lobster is usually pretty good. I'm a fan. Surf and turf, my friends. Put an egg on it. Jonathan says, hey, John. Is your portable sauna good to use like a regular sauna four or five days a week or just a here and then kind? Jim doesn't have one, thanks. Uh, you could use, it depends on the length of time that you're using it is going to matter. I found that uh, if I did more than an hour and a half at the highest temperatures, it would uh, it would turn off, which is panic mode if you have an extra pound to lose. <laughs> yeah, but... For, for generally speaking, like it was fine. Um, yeah, you could, you could easily get an hour in a day. Uh, you, I don't think you'd have any problems with it. Um, I had, I haven't had, I haven't done extensive use with it, but I've used it for like a couple of weeks every day and not had any problems with it. You may have to take off the fabric somehow and wash or figure out a way to yeah, clean it. Cause that's the one issue would be because you're sweating. So I, I put towels and stuff down so it doesn't really soak through, but it, the rest of it still kind of gets wet. <clears throat> so you might need to get some Lysol or some, I don't know, some kind of cleaner to get the sweat out if you're sweating a lot. That would be my, that would be my take for it. All right, dudes. I think we are done, so. Um, make sure if you guys need some soap, go to ballwash.com, use code Fitch to, uh, to get a 15% discount. Keep your balls clean, fellas. Don't get lazy. 
Uh, girls like nice, clean balls. Um, you can also, uh, I should put my, there's other, other links to in the description below. Check those things out. Um, Gorilla, Mind, Rush, Smooth, and the, uh, the Bedtime one. Gorilla Dream. They're all, they're all fantastic products. Uh, just follow the link for those. Uh, I have a newsletter you can sign up for too. Follow the link down below for that. <laughs> um, I won't bombard you with too much stuff. Mostly updates for now. But yeah. Play you guys out. Uh, I, like, I was going to play one song, but I like this one. No, it sounds funny, but I just can't stand the pain. Girl, I'm leaving you tomorrow. Seems to me, girl, you know I've done all I can, bitch. You see, I big stole and I borrowed. Yeah, it's easy. Easy like Sunday morning. So I'm easy. I'm easy like Sunday morning. I wanna get high. Oh man, I screwed it up already. <laughs> All right, dudes. Um, have a good one. I'll check y'all later. See you tomorrow.